Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another tutorial. Today we are going to look at how to convert our ball bounce into a 360 render like that. So you can watch it using your VR headsets. Okay. So let us learn how to create a 360 panorama render uh, for our ball bounce and upload it on YouTube. Okay. So in Blender, I'm going to open the file that I used to create the ball bounds. Okay. And uh, I will link the tutorial below so you can see that. This is a simple HDRI image setup. I have a ball and there's a shadow catcher plane. All right. So, if you want to create this setup, you can watch the tutorial below. Uh, the link is down. Uh, but I'm going to continue from here. And we need more multiple balls that are bouncing around, that are casting shadows, and we will create a panorama. So, the first thing we need to do is uh, make sure that the camera resolution is same as the HDR image resolution. So my HDR is 2K, so it's 2048 by 1024. For rendering purposes, I'll make it half, 1024 by 512. Okay. <coughs> the next thing we are going to do is convert the perspective camera into panoramic. And then the panorama type is going to be equirectangular. Okay, so that's the basic camera setup. We can shift back to panorama later on, but right now I'll work in perspective. What we need is uh, my armature is hidden, so I'll open it up. If I click on armature, right click and say select hierarchy, I will do uh, shift D to duplicate and then we will move it around. So, I will create another ball, bounce there, and we can select the camera, and I will make it 90 degrees to render, and we can look around. Now, this is our panorama, so we need to put a few ball bounces on this side. I don't want to put anything here, because there are shadows from other objects, uh, so it's better to... Uh, work on things where there is no complication because it's a simple tutorial. So you can right click and then select hierarchy, shift D to duplicate and then put another ball there somewhere. And you can see that after a while the ball disappears. That is because of our camera clipping plane. So our end is 100 so we will make it 500 and the ball is this one again? Okay. Now all the balls are bouncing at the same time, so we will select this one. From here, we will go into timeline. And I will move it, say, eight k keyframes. Just select all the keyframes and move it to eight. By the way, you can zoom in here. And then the last one, I'll move it say 13. Some other keyframes, so we have the ball bouncing at different times. Okay. <coughs> now we will select any one, the, the one which is closest, I guess. Select hierarchy and shift P. Select camera, move on the other side, select hierarchy, make sure that we are not here and then let's zoom out and we see now there are three on this side, we need a few on this side. So I'll move it. And make sure that it is in the camera view.
Okay. So you can move it round. See it is there. And then again, I will select these keys and move it around. Okay. So select hierarchy should be Move it. Move it wherever you want it, and then move it. Move this around, maybe twelve, nine, something. So you get the idea. You can do more if you want. To make things interesting, I will also go to add object, add mesh, gears, add a gear, and I'll put the gear on top of our camera. I'll use the seven keys so I know where the camera is, and then one key so that it moves above the camera. Okay. So if you look at zero, select the camera, and then if you move it up, you will see it up in the sky. Okay. So that's about it. So we have now our balls bouncing. What we need to do is our plane. We need to make sure that the plane is pretty big so that it can cast shadows on all our objects okay. so we have to make sure that the shadow is there select the camera and make sure all the shadows are there all right All right, so we'll select this one now and then go to panorama and then because everything is in cycles we are only have to animate from 1 to 24 and then it's still going to be a loop because if you select this and go to see what I covered in the last class view frame selection you will see that it's a looping video so anytime the ball will always be bouncing if you go to render render image this is what you will get Okay, so there are two balls here and one ball here, three, four, five. Okay, so now we will go to render setup. Maybe let's see, make sure that this is 2048 by 1024. Name what you want to save it as straight ball 360, I guess. I'm rendering as FFmpeg and encoding I'm using MPEG4 and quality is peculiar perceptually useless. Alright. And then you go to render, render animation. Okay, so once your animation is rendered, you can go in After Effects, or any other video editing software, and you just uh, render the loop 
uh, for uh, two or three minutes so you have enough time in YouTube so that people can look around okay so I put the wheel here so you could see that so it is interesting to add certain objects just so that you can find those so in after effects I will import the file I have one file here which is already done so I'll drag it down here okay and I guess this is the long one so I already did the Okay, so this is one file. So I will hit Control D many times. Composition, composition settings, make it longer. Okay, so maybe two minutes. And then you make sure that your animation loops. So you go to animation. Keyframe assistant sequence layer. We'll stop there and then right click. Recompose. Okay, and then we'll make it. Then we'll control D the pre-composition many times and then we can repeat the steps and then you can then render this video out go to file export add to media encoder and render the video out uh, I will put the description uh, the link to the encoder down but we need this partial media metadata injector so you just have to search for it partial media metadata injector okay and then if you click on the link if you are mac or windows download it and then you will get this injector file so if you double click on that file You have to select your video and then I did not add a Studio 3D. So if you have Studio 3D, you turn it on, but in, for our purpose, we only have one. And then we say inject metadata and it asks you what to save it as. And it says injected and we save it. Okay. And that's about it. Now it has the required information for Facebook or YouTube to understand that it is a 360 video. If you don't inject the metadata, then uh, there are chances that your video may not be recognized by Facebook or YouTube that it is a 360 video. Okay, and that's about it. Now, once you upload the video, YouTube will understand that it is a 3D video and you will be able to look around in 3D and if you use a headset you can uh, with the gyroscope that is there in your mobile you can turn around and see the back side of the scene all right so that's basically how a 360 panorama is done thank you very much for following the tutorial and hope you learned something new today Bye-bye.